Hello and welcome to the latest edition of TechCast. We are broadcasting live here from Money 2020 and I am joined by Will Shukra, um, formerly of Rakuten and uh, who has just started a new role at Invincible Brands, a digital retailer um, that uh, specializes in startup um, fashion brands. Uh, Will, thanks very much for joining us. Pleasure, um, Chris. You also have the great honor of being on the Tech Advisory Board. Yep. Uh, and given that we're here at Money 2020 talking about uh, tech and disruption to uh, the retail landscape, I thought it might be a good place for us to start. It's just what have you been your thoughts over the last couple of advisory boards? Of what are the themes that are coming up that we want to hear about and um, uh, what's on people's minds with regards to disruption? What are the sort of things we're going to see at tech this year? But I think we've had a really interesting um, number of sessions trying to really dive into what we're going to uh, base the conference around. And, and the main thing that's come through is that retail is just increasingly becoming analogous with tech. You, you can't be a retailer today and not be absolutely superb in your delivery of, of tech, either to customer experience uh, or to uh, logistics. Um, and so some of the key things that we've been looking at are what is the role of AI increasingly yeah. going to, to play? Um, how uh, how's logistics um, and supply chain really altering as people are moving from just thinking about digital transformation, where, to be honest, if you're thinking about digital transformation today, you're probably in quite a lot of trouble. Um, what the best uh, retailers uh, are talking about is just their digital plans and how to really embrace omnichannel if that's yeah. relevant for them but also how to partner with uh, some great tech companies to be able to um, drive some of those yeah. advances in AI and other elements. You've got a fascinating sort of overview of um, the whole landscape of retail. You were previously running Nectar, yep. um, and so helping a lot of legacy retailers with their data and, and how they were uh, working out what the customers wanted. You've then been at Rakuten, which is obviously one of the largest e-commerce players in the whole world. Uh, the Japanese marketplace giant, yep. uh, and now you've moved to a startup business um, where technology is just part and parcel of what they do. And I guess I'd be really interested to get your view of, look, you've got one end of the spectrum, you've got the likes of Rakuten and you've got Invincible Brands who are incredibly digitally native, and, and those businesses, I guess, technology and innovation uh, just come a just second nature to them. And then when you look back at your days at Nectar when you were helping businesses like Sainsbury's, yep. um, I guess my question is, are legacy retailers dead? Is there any way, as you say, they can catch up uh, these sort of the likes of Rakuten or indeed the, the small, disruptive, fast, uh, fast startup brands like this? I think the first thing that you uh, you said they were really talking about the just the starting mentality for, for Invincible Brands and, and indeed for Rakuten, but particularly then if you look at some of the Chinese uh, players, Alibaba, et cetera, yeah. Tencent, just comes from a different place. It comes from um, thinking mobile first. It comes from thinking about ecosystems. So how you can pull together different uh, cus uh, different businesses and areas of focus to serve the customer better. Um, whereas what you do see, particularly you know in the UK and the US, is uh, people starting from a uh, an idea that you have to just sell through bricks and mortar on your own and you know, anyone else's yeah. is competition. That that's a big challenge and I think uh, that's been a big uh, mindset shift for, for some of the retailers. I think specifically actually when you mentioned uh, Sainsbury's, um, particularly given you know a lot of the press that's recently happened with uh, the uh, failed Asda uh, merger straight takeover, actually I think Mike Coop deserves a huge amount of uh, credit for what I think has been one of the most inspired moves of the last decade in retailing which was the Argos um, yeah. takeover. And, you know, actually, if you look at the retail, you would never have backed to be a success in the digital area. It's, it's Argos, who were a catalogs retailer. They were, uh, you know, dreadful secondary location stores. Um, and under John Walden really did uh, transform themselves to be the biggest competitive threat to Amazon in, in the UK. Uh, so I think you can make those changes as uh, legacy businesses. What I think the problem is now for businesses such as M&S, who have made some great hires to really you know, transform and really embrace the digital agenda, is are they just too late? You know, right. Sainsbury's really bought that a, a reasonable while ago now, that capability, and have embedded it into the business, to embrace data and analytics. Marks and Spencers, uh, I think, going to be really pushed to be able to, uh, to get there in time before they are 
destroyed by Ocados or, or others. It's interesting because John Walden's name is synonymous with the transformation that Argos went on, right? Yeah. Um, now, there have been um, a number of potted other um, um, uh, CEOs that have been parachuted into business. I think people like Alex Baldock's come out yep. of the banking industry. Uh, Henry Birch has come out of the gaming industry. But actually, they're few and far between, aren't they? And it, it feels to me, can, can these businesses go on these journeys when um, so much of the leadership is tied up in the legacy, uh, the, the legacy business where, where retailers come from? Does it really require that fresh thinking? Are we going to have to see more of the likes of Walden coming into the sector? I really think you are, unfortunately. I think what you've seen, particularly within UK retailing, is some brilliantly talented um, traders uh, in, in retail. And I think that the challenge is the world's moved on from there, customer experience has moved on. Even if you're talking about the poundlands of this world who you know, are trading in value, you still have to really understand your customer. You still have to embrace analytics. You still have to, it's, it's a different mindset. Um, and I think bringing in people who get that from other, other sectors to really become competitive again as a sector is where retail will have to go. Yeah, absolutely. And you, um, as I say, you recently moved from Rakuten yep. to Invincible Brands. Um, really intrigued by A, why that business? This is not one that many of us have heard of, um, and uh, Rakuten is a huge, huge global name. Uh, and secondly, if you'd had the chance, would you have gone into a legacy business, a legacy retail business, or is that for you? Is that, like, um, you know, that's not a game I want to play, that's just too tough and ask. Uh, look, very interesting question. To answer Invincible Brands piece, um, Invincible addresses two of the really big things that I've seen happening in, in retail over the last few years. Uh, the fact that some of the bigger uh, corporate businesses just don't have the capability um, to be able to move quickly enough in NPD to address the ever increasing speed of customer uh, tastes and, and how those change. Um, and Invincible has just built this incredible platform to be able to do that very, very quickly. We, we launched brands in three months. It's, it's right, incredible. Right. Um, and the second piece is that I think all retailers are really struggling to uh, build relationships and address millennials. Um, and again, through uh, a very, very clever um, relationship with uh, influencer marketers, but also just a really deep understanding of what's important to millennials and how to communicate with them, you know, Invincible outperforms the competition significantly on that. So I think those are going to be two, two big themes going forwards. Um, yeah, and I thought that was a really exciting part of uh, the world to get involved and in. And you clearly think, therefore, that despite the growth of Amazon in the West, Alibaba, JD, Rakuten in the East, that there is still mm -hmm. a place to play for small niche businesses in, in commerce and retail. Absolutely. I, I mean, you look at Rakuten, which, as yeah. you say, I've, I've got great experience uh, with. I, I've worked for Hiroshi Miki Mikitani, the CEO and founder of, of Rakuten, one of the best entrepreneurs on the planet. Um, and what was fascinating with him is he really has managed to um, drive through Rakuten a constant focus on entrepreneurship. Yeah. And it's outside just retail. It started as a marketplace, but he now uh, is launching the fourth mobile network in, in Japan. It's constantly looking for the next new piece. Um, but as you get bigger, that gets harder. Um, and you, you definitely have some advantages by being small and nimble uh, and closer to the customer. So I think there will always be uh, space for, for lean startups who are um, scaling up and, and really challenging the competitors if they move quickly enough. Um, but you also have space for, for brilliantly uh, run businesses like Rakuten. So I'm not going to let you off the hook on my previous question. Would you have joined a legacy business if the right opportunity had come up? Look, I, I'm someone who loves challenge, and I, yeah. I, I think today you don't have much bigger challenges than uh, you know going into um, you know one of those those retailers we've, we've mentioned. I think there uh, are some great examples of where it's been done really well. Um, you know, I think Lego at the beginning of some of their digital transformation, but they've really transformed some of their uh, corporate social responsibility around the use of plastics already and, and really shown how to move a large organization quickly. Um, and, you know, Argos, a great example earlier on of, of digital transformation. So it's a huge challenge. I, I really think a lot of the retailers we all know and love um, may well disappear in the next yeah. 
three to five years. I, I just think some of them have left it too late. And the um, leadership challenge, and that, that's what it comes down to. You have to have a wholly focused, united uh, organization, free of politics, just focused on one aim to really um, make those types of businesses fit for purpose in, in the modern age. I'd relish that challenge, um, uh, but it's a, it's a very difficult one. Yeah, it's a big one. Um, and whereabouts, tech obviously is coming up fast, uh, October yep. uh, in London, very much an international event uh, this year. Uh, already 50, 60% of our speakers are coming uh, from overseas. Where do you see internationally um, the kind of shop windows into innovation that retailers, brands, commerce companies ought to be looking to in order to get inspiration? Well, I think it's also so important with, with Brexit coming yeah. uh, to, to be looking out to the rest of the world um, and, uh, and embracing best practice uh, from all over the place. But I think you still have significant innovation coming from Silicon Valley. Um, I spent a lot of the last two years uh, really embedded in, in, in that innovation and it's, uh, it's just phenomenal, the amount of funding behind it and the amount of ideas that come through. When you're looking at... Um, partnerships and on mobile though you know you really have to look east and, and you probably have to look to China um, but the you know the one outlier I'd also say is uh, going to become more and more interesting over the next couple of years is India. India right. have um, 1.2 billion uh, people on mobile phones uh, they have the second highest um, uh, internet number of people accessing the internet in the world um, and they have the fastest, really, growth of adoption of, of uh, that technology in a massively changing retail landscape that, that will just skip three or four uh, levels of, of generation that we've been through in, in the West. So I'd watch India um, probably more in the next couple of years than, than now, but, but China and Silicon Valley, hugely interesting. Do you, do you think the Indian market has the potential to make that sort of quantum leap just as the Chinese market, what we've seen in China, where it's just effectively left the desktop age uh, and laptop age to, out. A absolutely. I think you've got the all the factors, a growing middle class, growing prosperity, uh, you know, a really unstructured infrastructure today that has real challenges around uh, the capital costs of mom and pop stores, etc. Um, and Really interestingly, the role the government's playing is, is crucial. So India has the largest digital identity scheme in the world, uh, where their, their, basically their national ID scheme is, is a digital one. Yeah. And that's providing the platform to be able to allow people to register for internet banking, register for all these kind of services that are just very, very difficult and timely to, uh, to get otherwise. Um, and I think that will really change uh, how people address that that market. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much. Great. I think we're just about out of time. In fact, we're due on stage in a minute at Money 2020 to um, talk about money, the stuff, the things that we've just spoken about. So this was a great dry run. So thank you very much. Thanks, uh, thanks. Welcome uh, everyone to Tech. We're really looking forward to seeing you all there. Uh, until the next time. Thank you.